Hi there, Simon from simonwoodsit.com. I've got a couple of sparklers in front of me. Uh, but before I tell you all about what the sparklers are, uh, I'm doing a, a, a few videos when I'm talking about what the, the sort of gifts to give to people who are into, into their wine, where, you, where it's not going to be a bottle of wine and you don't want to spend heaps of money on something like a wine fridge or a Coravin or something like that. Um, so um, what, some of them have been, I've, I've had a load that's been sent me uh, by a company called the Wine Gift Centre, uh, but they didn't send me any of these things. These things are wonderful. Um, I don't know who's, if it is there's a generic name for them, cooling sleeves. What you do is you just, uh, they've got, they're filled with some sort of gel, stick them in the fridge for um, however long, freezer, and then uh, when you want a cold bottle of wine, just shove it over there, and um, it doesn't take all that long. Uh, a few minutes, will, uh, it'll be all it takes. If you leave it on for like 20 minutes, yeah, that's almost too long. Um, so good present, and uh, I can recommend those. Uh, so I'll just grab these. Sometimes the, the awkward thing is sometimes that they are designed for bottles that are this shape, and some bottles are uh, have uh, fatter bottoms and uh, struggle to get them on. Anyway, the two wines. Uh, they're both French, but uh, they're not from the same region. Uh, first one is Calvé Cremant de Bordeaux uh, 2013. So let's give this a whirl. It smells clean, juicy, slightly sherbety. Um, maybe a little bit of um, the, the East British drink called Cresta, it's frothy man. Almost a little bit of strawberry in there, uh, which is uh, strange for when you think of um, uh, the grapes that you think that they've been making wine with in Bordeaux, but not so strange when you discover that uh, the blend here is like 70% Semillon and 30% uh, Cabernet Franc. So Cabernet Franc, maybe have some red fruit character that it's bringing to the party. The slightly bracing side to it, uh, that pithy edge of semillon, that's coming through quite strongly, and um, I, I don't notice as much as the red fruit when I when I taste it, just a little bit uh, when I smelt it. It's it's okay. Um, I can't say it, it's the best sparkling wine I've ever had, uh, but it, it's got a nice crispness and uh, maybe one of those uh, things that you'll be happy with uh, a glass or something. Uh, there is this sharpness about it that might put a few people off. It may be that the further time in bottle that will mellow, but I don't think the idea is to keep wines like this. It does have a vintage on there, but they put it in tiny letters uh, and in a colour quite similar to, uh, well, it's, you, you, if I show you the, uh, hold it up to the camera like that, it's really hard to make it out on the bottle. Um, but um, what I call fair enough wine, I'm, I'd be happy if someone bought me a glass of that, I wouldn't look for a plant pot. Plant pot as in something to pour it out of and uh, uh, move on to something else. But I will move on to something else. Um, the second wine is Champagne. Uh, this is Champagne Nicolas Foyat uh, Brut Reserve. Now there's a, a, a Nicolas Foyat Brut that is in quite a few shops at the moment that seems to come in at under £20. This is one that, um, uh, I don't know what the difference is in the blend, but it's, um, it seems to be a, a price bracket up. So it's about 20, 25, 30 pounds, that sort of thing. Anyway, give this a whirl. Slightly. Well, this smells richer, toastier, um, as if there's um, yeah, more concentration in, in, in the base wine. Feels like it's going to be um, crisp, but with extra, I don't, I don't know whether it's thyme on leaves or, or something that seems to have given it a slightly um, it, it smells like it's going to be a little bit richer. I'll, I'll, sh I'll shut up and taste it. Yeah, it is, and the, the Lee's character is given like a bready, yeasty, toasty richness. Fruit flavour's still there. Not so much the red berry I was getting in the first one, but a little bit of pineapple, maybe ever so slight nectarine, quite a lot of um, ripe apple. Um, it's it's okay. It's it's uh, it's what I call par for the course for champagne. It's um, there's nothing there that makes me uh, makes me want to jump up and really fly the flag for it. But I would um, I'd have one glass of the first one and I'd have two glasses of the second one, um, and maybe a third, but not on the same occasion. You understand? Because then I would struggle to stand up. Um, but uh, you can all, you, you don't have to polish off your sparkling wine uh, in one go. And I was talking about wine gadgets. One of the things that the Wine Gift Centre did send me um, is a champagne stopper. So what I'm going to do is uh, pop one of these um, in there. This one is an unbranded one, so I'll stick that in the in the champagne. I just so happen to have another one at, on hand. This one's got the name of a Prosecco producer on there, but I won't do any advertising for the Italians when we're on French wine. 
Um, what I find with uh, uh, with these is um, uh, if the wine is is a really young one, they're good at uh, keeping a, you know, some of the bubbles in there. If the wine's a little bit more mature, it's as if the uh, the, the carbon dioxide has, has dissolved into uh, uh, in, into the wine, and the release of the bubbles is actually. Uh, quite slow and gentle. I've left bottles of sparkling wine open, well, good sparkling wine open for a, a few days, and nothing, sometimes people say, oh, put a spoon in, that doesn't have any effect at all. Uh, but if you leave it, uh, leave it just open there, and pour a glass after a couple of days, often there'll be quite a bit of fizz still left in it. If it's young, however, it's a slightly different manner, uh, matter. But the other thing I like about these is if you have opened something, um, and um, you, you then want to save it for another time. Um, you, can, you can't get champagne corks back in. Have I got the ones here? No, there. Uh, because they fan out. The, the idea is it makes a really tight seal, and uh, the pressure in would uh, it, it, it has to be enough to keep the keep the cork in the, in the bottle with that wire cage on top. You can't get it back in the bottle unless you start chopping bits off. So something like this means it's it's far easier to uh, reseal the bottle so you can tip it over and. Uh, Knock it over in the fridge, and you won't get uh, uh, you won't get bubbles all over your bacon. Anyway, um, okay, wines, uh, nice gadget. See you soon.